Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to another video. So I want to give you all just a little introduction and reasoning behind um, a list that I wrote and it's called um, what it means to be Western. It's a list of points and principles that I discovered the you know that that are basically what makes up the West and what prompted me to write this these points is um, a number of things actually so you know of course I am a convert became Muslim at 15 and um, someone who wanted to actually be serious about the religion I came in purely for that I didn't come in for a community, I didn't come in, I didn't even know any Muslims actually when I first converted, besides the ones in my neighborhood or the, you know, in my area of the city that are born Muslim, but they're not really, you know, adherents to the religion, just like they go on, uh, go to the masjid on Jumu'ah sometimes and may attend the Eid and things like that, but they're pretty much living a secular life. So I knew that um, I came in, I wanted to be sincere. <clears throat> my uncle was an example for me, Rahimullah, my father's brother. So I wanted to be sincere. And uh, I, I'm actually gonna do a series on the meanings of these points. I'm gonna first do about four videos of reading them, reading the points. But of course they need explanation because I'm the one who put them together. So anyways, back to what prompted them. Came into the religion, I wanna give you a summary. Came into the religion, got taken advantage of in my first marriage. Got brainwashed in my first marriage um, to the point that I started studying what makes up a cult and the mind of a cult leader after my first divorce. Um, you know, being in the mix with the with the Muslims in America, and not only getting pushback, getting harm, getting attacks, verbal attacks, um, contradictory statements. When you try to affirm a belief, you get contradiction or fighting, fighting you or disagreeing with you. And we are all supposed to be on the same thing. And I didn't deal with any other communities like different sects I only dealt with Ahlul Sunnah my entire Islamic experience so I found it very odd that not only in marriage I had people a person going against what you know what we're supposed to be following and saying something contrary to the text saying the text in one one breath and then saying what's contrary to it and doing what's contrary to it in the next same thing with the practitioners in the ranks so i found that very odd and strange and i'm like i don't understand why is there so much friction and why are people fighting me when you try to just establish or affirm what we're learning in class and even what we speak about in conversation so i said something's not right something's not right also the turmoil on the discord I'm like something, something, something's going on, and I need to find out what it is. So I decided to do my research and try to unravel all of this craziness that I was experiencing. And what it came down to was a difference between culture and religion. So our culture is Western, and what does that make up? The Western culture makes up all of the things that I wrote up wrote in the points that you will soon learn about I have 70 about 75 points altogether that's why I'm gonna break it up in four videos uh, they don't take that long to read off <coughs> excuse me so um, you know if you're interested to follow it just so that you'll be aware of what is plaguing us some people are not aware this is what I realized the Muslims are not aware that they're plagued with these issues because it's 
our default. It's something that you're raised upon. It's something that you hear and you see every day. And it, it is an obstacle in the way of Iman. It is. It doesn't allow you to fully accept and follow the religion the way you're supposed to. What also prompted me to do research was, you know, comparing and contrasting. When I went overseas, I would, um, you know, encounter Muslims who were nothing like the Muslims that I come from. And they were kind, they were, you know, very different, that's all I'm going to say. I saw what religiosity looked like from an Islamic land aspect versus what religiosity is perceived to be like in the West. So like I, like I said, I'm going to go through all of the points and you'll get exactly what I mean after I, um, I read them off to you. But <clears throat> uh, being educated in the West will definitely um, have the upper hand in your thought process, in the way that you function, in the way that you see things, because it's the dominant factor in your life. You know, we live, a, we live in the secular society all throughout the West. And by the West, I don't just mean the United States. I mean all of the West, Australia, North America, which is Canada and the United States, and all of Europe. And speaking with the European Muslims, and speaking about the behavior issues that we have in the community, the communities, in the converted communities, it's the same exact behavior. So the common denominator is our Western culture. That's the problem. So in order for one to eradicate these issues, this is another reason why I, uh, I, wrote, I wrote the list. It comes from years of studying. Um, psychology, sociology, this is what I had to search, I had to look into, I had to look at the non-Muslims to find out, you know, plain and simple, what are they saying, what are their blatant beliefs, and then I found that, oh, okay, this is what's wrong with us, we haven't let these things go, this is what they indoctrinated us with, and this is, these principles and these things that they're saying is exactly what I have been experiencing with the Muslims because I never mixed with the non-Muslims before. I've only mixed with the Muslims. And what I saw from the non-Muslims confirmed what I was experiencing with the Muslims. And that's sad. That's sad. So I just want to read this, this uh, excerpt from... Yeah... Abdurrahman Nasr Saadi's book, The Tree of Faith, to show you that when you have certain knowledge in your mind, it's going to conflict with the knowledge that you're trying to learn and the religion that you're trying to implement. So, <clears throat> let me look here. So, the Sheikh says that extracting the blessings of the Quran the most the most important of which is the attainment of faith is done through pondering its verses and signs pondering stops the obstinate denier in his tracks and prevents the transgressor committing his transgression Allah the exalted says do they not ponder these words Atharam al-qul Meaning that if these people talked about in the context of the verses had truly pondered over the Quran as it deserves to be pondered, it would have prevented them from disbelieving and rejecting. Okay, so disbelieving, of course, for the Kufar and from rejecting is released to, in my case, what I've seen from the Muslims. Necessitated faith for them and followed following of the one who came with it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Let me move this book. Hold up. 
So then Allah says, no, the fact is that they have denied something which their knowledge does not embrace. Meaning that had their knowledge embraced the Quran, this would have prevented them from rejecting and necessitated their acceptance of faith. The point, the understanding that I got from that was there is a conflict going on in people's minds and the knowledge that's in your mind directly conflicts with the knowledge that you're learning from the religion. It's two opposites. It's an oxymoron. Okay? Western thought and Islamic belief does not mix. It doesn't go together. So there's a clash. And when there's a clash, there's a clash in behavior. It's like two people fighting each other in one, in one body. So thanks for listening. And I'm going to... You know, like I said, start reading off these points that I have. Hopefully, people will benefit from it and get a clearer picture of um, the afflictions that we have. Because, no, no, you know, it's being talked about. The other man write about it. I recommend the book, uh, Explanation of the Aspects of Jahiliyyah by um, Muhammad Abdul Wahab. Aspects of the Days of Jahiliyyah is from, by Muhammad Abdul Wahab. But the explanation, I believe, is from... Sheikh Al Uthaymeen, Rahimahullah. And um, <clears throat> it's a very good book. It goes over the aspects of the days of ignorance. And uh, we have current aspects <clears throat> of the days of ignorance that is, you know, born of, uh, of from disbelief. So I hope everyone's listening to, could follow me. Hopefully, uh, you know, it's clear what I'm saying. And um, yeah. Thanks for tuning in and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video, inshallah. And I'm also going to label the videos Hijra away from thoughts and ideas. That's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to title them. Hijra away from thoughts and ideas. That's the whole point of it. You have to get rid of those things. The physical Hijra is not enough. You have to get rid of those ideas and those thoughts and those behaviors. You cannot bring them along with you or it's not going to work. My salama.